Right then, welcome to my non-spoiler review of Pacific Rim Uprising. This is, of course, the sequel, the long-awaited sequel to Del Toro's masterpiece in the original Pacific Rim. This features John Boyega as the lead and producer, in fact, on the movie, with Stephen S. Knight as the director, and it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. It also has Scott Eastwood in another fairly large role and on a whole I kind of start out my reviews with essentially can I recommend this movie now I caught this on Friday so it was opening weekend and there was a handful of people in the movie studio which is surprising uh, because I was expecting this to be quite a packed out theater especially because it is opening weekend it was kind of priming recently around London but unfortunately it was pretty much dead and empty and I can kind of see why I will say just from the outset realistically I, I don't recommend this movie to anyone that actually really enjoyed the first one now I'll kind of go into my problems with it but I also want to praise some parts of the movie as well uh, the movie act does actually have some quite good lighting uh, in parts so from a technical aspect it's not a complete disaster but if we're looking at the people involved in this movie a lot of them have a rich history in working on quite lower budget tv properties uh, Stephen Esther Knight especially which I was looking forward to him directing this because of obviously what he's done as the showrunner for Daredevil Marvel's Daredevil which was exceptional unfortunately it doesn't cross over to this so Without spoiling it, but going into some of the story, essentially the Jaegers are still happening, they're still around, and the Kaiju make a return somehow. You've seen the trailer, so you know that they come back. How they come back is, again, it's in the trailer, but it's kind of a twist. It's actually a twist that you see coming a mile away, and that's a massive letdown in and unto itself. But it also kind of shows what this movie is designed for and who it's designed for which I'm sure anyone could have guessed when they watched the first trailer this movie is aimed very specifically at the children's market which is a is a huge shame for me you know I'm I'm clearly not a child you can tell from my voice uh, and the vlogs that I do and what legendary managed to create in the first movie was basically the american godzilla this movie and this universe crossed over so many generations and I don't quite think Legendary got that. I don't think they knew exactly what they had uh, on their hands. And as a result of that, without Del Toro in the mix, kind of steering the ship, they've made a massive departure from what I think could have been an exceptional franchise. We've gone into very corny dialogue, quick-witted jokes and I use that jokes in, in inverted commas you know literally every five seconds they're throwing these one-liners out or little gestures basically trying to be quite humorous and light-hearted uh, and it's, it's very much aimed at children now one of the pros and positives to the first film was how intricately designed and how careful they made the kaiju but also the Jaegers if you're expecting that in this movie you are going to be extremely sorely disappointed. Again, without going into spoilers, there are not many kaiju, and those that are in it are in it for an extremely small amount of time. There are not many Jaegers, and those that are in it are not in it for a very long time at all. It's very people-focused, and it also gets that wrong. So the first, the first act of the movie is supposed to be scene-setting, and you're getting to know John Boyega's character and also the teen angst that he meets. But in doing so, you don't really like either of them. And you're not really invested in the world very much at all at this point in time. It does a good job of explaining how the world is after the Pacific Rim uh, issue and the kind of save the world which we had in the, in the first movie. But it doesn't really get anywhere until the end of the second act of this film. That's when you actually start to go, oh, okay, so these are people now. They do actually feel stuff. Oh, I'm somewhat invested. I, I know where they're coming from. So 
even though they've changed the massive direction to very much a people's film, and that is where the focus is, they just don't do it right, and it's that it's such a huge shame, and it's a huge letdown. Not only that, the acting from these people is appalling. Now, I know John Boyega is uh, a London lad, but that accent, unfortunately, really did not come across very well in this film. And yeah, I, I mean, I live in London myself, but when it's on screen and it's kind of forced and played up to, it doesn't translate very well. It doesn't come across very well. And it was of, of a detriment to the film. Where, whereas you had the likes of, say, Idris Elba, which managed to pull it off very, very well, and it sounded absolutely fine. Second thing, Scott Eastwood's acting was horrendous for probably about two-thirds of this film, and really forced, really wooden, very, I'm acting, I am being, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be an actor, basically. It was, it was really not very good. So, the acting to one side, which again, children are not really going to be that pent up over, they're not going to be that focused on. The Maiko character, or Mako character, now John Boyega's half-sister, or sister, adopted sister, her voice in the first movie, you could actually make out what she was saying. Unfortunately, in this one, I'm not sure what they did. Uh, but I really did struggle to actually understand what she was saying. But it has to be pointed out, the difference between the first one and this one, her English and the way she pronounces things has gotten really, really bad. Uh, and like I said, I, I struggled to actually make out what she was saying. So, acting to one side, vocals to one side, the colour palette that they've done in this film, again, all aimed at children, it's very, very bright. It's really overlit. Heck, there's even lens flares. I know we all love lens flares, right? And yeah, it, that's very much all children focused, all centered around children. Again, a massively stark difference to what we saw in the first movie. A very gritty and dark Del Toro movie, uh, which was what the first Pacific Rim was. This is night and day difference, and it's really, really jarring as well, because you're going into it going, oh, this is Pacific Rim. And you've got that universe in your in your mind's eye, and then you're presented with something which is completely different in colouring, uh, which is a real shame. So another thing which leads you to kind of go around and think that this is essentially just a children's film and how Legendary really did drop the ball is that the cheesy kind of shots of the Jaegers in this film, and you would have seen it from some of the trailers, but it's a night and day difference from this to the first one. In the first film, the Jaegers were badass. They would stomp through things and there wasn't really any cheesiness to how they were framed in the scene. Giant monsters and robots are cheesy, but the way it was framed was not that cheesy in, in a scene. However, in this movie, again, I don't know whether this is Stephen S. Knight and his you know, low budget previous work or low budget comparative work anyway, or this is just what Legendary wanted, but they've got the most cheesiest of action shots for these Jaegers and how they're framed in the shot. It is just horrendous. It l reminds me of Transformers. Essentially, what we're dealing with here is Legendary dropped the ball. They didn't quite realize what they had. They didn't know that this property in this franchise franchise is now dead in the water anyway but they didn't understand that this property crosses over to multiple generations and they've aimed it just clear cut at children which is an error of judgment anyway and you're just left with this transformer-esque michael bay-esque universe now and it's really really bad like i say overall the story works for children there's there's a twist that you can see coming a mile away children would probably like it there's weird kind of plot devices which you're looking at going well that doesn't actually make any sense anyway but whatever again children would find it fine the lighting it's all brightly lit it's for children it's to make them go wow it's all full of color and oh i love it the Jaegers don't have any really good designs anymore, and you barely see them. They're in the movie for like five minutes, if that. They're, they're just not around. And it's such a shame. In the first movie, you had a real sense of care and attention to this universe. 
the kaiju seemed to be well fleshed out they seemed to be well made and they all had something unique uh, and the same as the Jaegers, everything seemed to be really carefully created. This seems to be just slapped together. We'll stick a cool name on this Jaeger. We won't even call this kaiju anything. And they won't have any, any unique properties anyway, because they're not going to be in the film for very long. It's, I don't know, it's difficult to really rate this movie. I don't rate movies anyway, but I, I definitely can't recommend it for anyone that actually enjoyed the first one and is, you know, above 12, basically. Um, the soundtrack is alright, I guess, I, I'll say that, and cinematography wise, there are some good shots here and there, but on a whole, you will be disappointed watching this film. They, they really dropped the ball, and it's a real shame, and this video will likely be demonetized as a result of it getting a real negative review from me, uh, but I'm really sick at the moment, and I can't be on camera, um, because of some deformities so that out of the way if you enjoyed this review do give it a big thumbs up even if you didn't enjoy it give it a big thumbs up get the word out there and let me know your thoughts on pacific rim uprising let me know if you shared any of my sentiments and i rambled a little bit here i'm a little bit out of it that's you know is kind of what happens apologies but let me know all your thoughts down below in the comment section just as a side note to people that regularly watch my channel content may be a little bit skewed the next few days just because I'm recovering and, and trying to get back to normal so if there is a bit of a mishap with content I apologize but I'm pushing through and I'm trying to make some stuff for you all anyway I've rambled I've spoken enough don't go and watch this film I genuinely can't recommend it for anyone that liked the first one and is above 12 however on a rainy day if you want to take your kids out definitely they'll love it they absolutely will and they'll pester you for the figures of the Jaegers without a shadow of a doubt. As always guys, I've been Mr. H, and until next time, I'll catch you in the comments section.